Hello and welcome to the lecture Introduction to Cryptography. My name is Dominik Schröder and in this lecture we will talk about what is cryptography and where it is actually coming from. Let's start this lecture with some history. We will start with the amazing Skytale that we will take a closer look at. So here you can see a nice example of how crypto was done in the ancient times. So what you see here is first of all a wooden stick and there is some piece of leather that is wrapped around this wooden stick and you can see that there are some letters on it. And if you look very carefully, then you will see that there is a pointing arrow here that points to the secret message. And in this case, the secret message is you spy on. So this piece is called the Skytale and it was used around 500 years before Christ in, in the ancient Greece. And in order to transmit this message securely, right, you would not go around and carry it like that. Then anyone could read this, no. You would essentially unwrap it, you would unwrap it, and then the person who's carrying it would essentially just carry this leather piece. And as you can see, the only thing that is readable here are just some random letters. And once the recipient received it, right, what the person will do will essentially take its own secret. In this case, this actually comes from Eurocrypt 2013, was a very nice conference present. So the person would actually take his own version of the stick, put in the leather again, and then start wrapping it around, as you can imagine. Right, and once you do this nicely, as you can see here immediately, you understand how the letters are put together correctly. So this is, of course, from our view of today, clearly insecure, because you could simply just write down all of the different letters and create all the combinations and just look whether you have um, actually a readable text. Nevertheless, this is a very nice example of how crypto was then in the very past. And it's a very nice, nice, cute idea. Another famous example of an ancient cipher is the Caesar cipher. So Caesar had the idea that you essentially start with a plain text and what you will do is you will just push the letter a few positions further in the alphabet. What does it mean? Well, it essentially means you associate a certain number in the, in, to, to each letter in the alphabet, right? So A would, for example, be one, B would be two and so on and so forth. And then you would push this letter for, for a fixed number. Right, so for example, suppose your letter is A and you would push it by two, then the plain text letter that you can read, the A, will now become the C in your ciphertext space. So Caesar was doing this, um, of course, for all of the letters in the, in the secret letter. And then the recipient, in order to decrypt the information, of course, had to reverse this operation. So in some sense, move the letters back. Another remarkable result was done by Kerkhoff. Kerkhoff realized that hiding the method that you use in order to encrypt your information does not bring any form of security. Instead, he realized that the security should only come from the secrecy of the key. And this is known as the Kerkhoff principle, which is the basis for any modern crypto scheme. Around 1930s, there was the invention of essentially moving away from this cryptographic operations by hand towards using machines. And one of the famous examples of such machines are of course, or is of course, the German Enigma. The Germans used the Enigma in the Second World War in order to, to secure the communication, meaning whenever somebody in the field was sending an encrypted message, they were carrying around these Enigmas. And in order to decrypt this information, then of course you need a second device. So this period was relatively short 
even though we were now using machines in order to secure the, the information, there was still no real understanding what security actually means. There was no understanding what are formal proofs. There was no understanding of, of what we understand as modern cryptography these days. Another outstanding result was the invention of the information theory by Shannon. Shannon observed that there is an encryption scheme that achieves unconditional security, and this is called the one-time pad. So what does unconditional security mean? What does it mean? Well, it means that regardless of how many time you invest, how many energy, how long you try to attack the cipher, there's no chance of recovering the message, regardless of the possibilities of the adversary. And this is very surprising, right? If you would think about it, the usual view on crypto is that there's always a good guy trying to create a new scheme and there's a bad guy trying to break the scheme. But as it turns out, there exists one scheme where in some sense this battle is won. Of course, you would ask, why do we have a lecture then on crypto if there's already a solution for it? Well, as the name suggests, you can just use it once. And in particular, if, you, if you're reusing the same key twice, the scheme becomes completely insecure. The next big step in crypto was essentially the invention of public key crypto. Diffie and Hellman published the amazing paper called New Directions in Cryptography. You should really take a look. It's amazing. They realized at this point in time that they were actually changing an entire field. Simultaneously, Merkel invented public key crypto, but back then the information was classified. That's why we, we were not aware of, of the simultaneous invention back then. In this amazing paper, they describe the idea of key exchange. So what is key exchange? It sounds like magic. Suppose that Alice and Bob are communicating over a public channel. So everything that they are exchanging can be observed by everyone. And at the end of the protocol, they are agreeing on a key and agree that a key that they did not agree on before, right? So in contrast to private key crypto where the key is shared before, in this case, there was no information shared which means they both interact on this public channel, they agree on a private key, and nobody else actually realizes what that key is. They also described the idea of a public encryption scheme and the idea of a signature scheme, but they didn't know how to construct it. Shortly afterwards, afterwards Rivers, Charmy and Edelman proposed the RSA encryption scheme, which turned out to be the first public key encryption scheme and the first signature scheme. For this amazing contribution, they received the Turing Award. Looking back from, from today to this time, if you look at the original paper of Diffie and Hellman, in fact, there was already public key encryption inside, but they didn't realize that they found it. A few years later, El Gamal observed that if you essentially fix the first round of this protocol and you view it as the public key, then you obtain a public key encryption scheme. 